and then she realizes what happened. Her son Jesus had resurrected. Death did not hold him bound. He resurrected. And, and she looked at me, because I was in that room, she looked at me and with this big smile and this happiness, she said, my son resurrected, my son resurrected. And I felt like she was telling me, everything will be okay. No matter what you go through in life, her son has resurrected and he will make everything new. So the first day, I figure out the first day was a day of pain when the Lord died. The second day was the day of remembrance when she remembered all her life and her son's life. And on the third day is the day of hope because her son had resurrected. When she said that, my heart was full of joy. And I remember that as a child, I went to catechism. And, and you know, I was born in the Catholic faith. So you grow up um, learning every continually, every time, learning more and more about the Bible, about um, our Lord Jesus, about our Catholic faith. And then when the time comes for Easter time, I heard the words, Jesus resurrected. I heard them from priests, from catechism teachers, from the people who sing, from different people. But I had never, ever heard those words directly from the mother of God. My son has resurrected. That is what is so profound. And I feel that has a tremendous meaning that perhaps I don't yet understand the fullness of this. But hearing these words from, from her, from the Blessed Mother, it's like if all the hope in the universe, all the, the beautiful plan of redemption that God has for us came together in those words. My son resurrected. Everything is okay. Everything will get better. It was so, so wonderful. And I was so blessed to receive this vision that now I share with you. And it came to me, this vision, exactly at the time that I needed. Because a couple of weeks before to this vision, a family that we knew close to our family, uh, their 17-year-old daughter had committed suicide. Tremendous pain for the family. It was so difficult to face that moment. A child, a young girl, that you see that everything is perfect in her life. Suddenly she takes her life. Um, when I went to see the family, they were so part of the family. I, I did not have a chance to visit directly with, with the parents, but this was part of the family. And uh, it was just something unimaginable. Very hard to, to understand how could this happen. It seemed like a dream. We said a prayer at that moment, and in that prayer, I asked, not, I did not ask them. I told them that we would say a prayer of thanksgiving. Some of them uh, looked a little strange. I said, yes, this is the time to thank God for the life of this, of this young girl. Let's thank him for the for choosing this family, these parents to be her parents, for choosing this family to be her family. Thank him for the moment that he gave her life in the womb of her mother, for her first smile, for her first step, for her first word, for her childhood, for her doubts, for her pains, for her happy moments, for all the... Um, 
you know, the, her outlook in life, her goals for the times that she was sick, for the times that she was healthy. We did this prayer and we ended up with um, uh, praying the Lord's Prayer and the, and the Hail Mary right after I finished praying the, the, uh, the Our Father. My Lord tells me to say a thanksgiving prayer to the Blessed Mother. And then I begin to pray. I ask the Holy Spirit, please give me the words to say a, a, a thank, thanksgiving prayer to the Blessed Mother. And I begin thanking the Blessed Mother for being there with this little girl. Because at that moment, she was not alone as she thought she would be, as the family thought she was completely alone. She was not alone. Blessed Mother was there with her. This was a little girl that was baptized. She made her first communion, her confirmation. I'm sure that she was a person that would pray her rosary. And when we pray the rosary, we ask humbly to the Blessed Mother to be with us now and in the time of our death. And I truly believe that the Blessed Mother was there with her at the time of her death. And that she took her soul and handed it to her son. Then I remember in the writings of Sister Faustina that, that she writes in one of those passages that how when uh, a priest asked her to go with him to visit this uh, man that was about to die. And as the priest was saying the prayers, she took, she was holding the, like a little bucket with the blessed uh, with the holy water and she took the all the bucket and she threw it at the face of the of that man and the priest was very upset with her and when she comes back to the convent uh, she begins to talk to our lord and uh, and tells him that you know that he got very upset the priest but that the priest did not see the amount of demons that were on top of that man tormenting his soul because he was about to die and that our lord tells her that it is true uh, that satan never never uh, lets go of trying to get us away from god but at the time of the person's death is when he 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 sends more demons there to torment that soul so that's why he recommends to pray the Rosary of the Divine Mercy when somebody is sick, when somebody is, is dying. So all these demons can go away. I remember that. And then I understood, no wonder our Lord wants thanksgiving to the Blessed Mother. If this little girl was finishing her time on earth, of course, there must have been demons there tormenting her. But when the Blessed Mother comes in, and I believe that that is the purpose in our, in our prayer of the, the Hail Mary, that she be there, not only to take our soul and present it to the Lord, but to defend us against those demons. Because if she is there, no demon can be there. So we finished the prayer with this, with this family. And um, later I, um, I got noticed that at the, at the viewing, at that time, at the viewing, the family told the priest that, um, that they had in the apartment where they lived, they had been um, other suicides and they had seen things, um, things move out of the way, and they had seen uh, like a little boy running there. So the priest told them to have that place um, uh, blessed. I understand that God has a time for each one of us to return to Him. And no one goes before, no one goes after. I truly believe that. 
one time the, the priest told us that at the time that he gives us life in the womb of our mother, he also gives us a time to go back. And of course we don't know, and that is, that is good. It will be horrible to know when you have to go. But the Lord uses the circumstances around our departure. And he uses them to touch the hearts of many people. This was the time for this girl to go. Just the circumstances. They have a meaning. They have a purpose to touch not only the family, but many people in the world. And I truly understand that. I understand that they... You know, one of the things that happen is that Satan cannot take away our life. Circumstances happen, and he could suggest to the person to take away their life. He could suggest giving them feelings of maybe this is not, life is not worth living, I have no purpose. What am I doing? I'm just an extra person. Things like that. Those are the suggestions of the enemy. God gave us a short time on this earth. Real life is there with him. But he gave us this short time here on earth to be happy. That's all he wants for us. To be happy. Recognize his love in his creation in everything that's around us. And to be happy. He gives us the opportunities, and of course the devil wants to take them away. He gives us the happiness, and of course he will bring sadness, because he will always go against what God is giving us. This, after I heard this, um, Father, my spiritual director, gave me a phone call and I shared with him this tragedy in this family that in, you know, in some way affected us too. I shared what the family had said and uh, I also shared that, uh, uh, that the police had said that uh, there were many, up to this day, there were many suicides among young people from 12 to 17. They were happening so, so fast. Um, and they were thinking, the police uh, were thinking that maybe it had to do with bullying. I shared this with father and uh, he made a prayer Immediately he says, well, let's, let's begin with a prayer. He made a beautiful prayer for the family. He made a beautiful prayer for that place. Asking God to send Archangel Michael and, and take away all those demons that could be in that place. It looked like a, if, I don't know, like, like a curse in, in that apartment. If other people had committed suicide in there, and now this little girl... So he made a strong prayer for that place, that God's blessing will come upon there, that, that Archangel Michael and his angels will come and take away whatever evil force could be there. And then he made a prayer for this young lady. And it was so wonderful. In his prayer, he asked God to be merciful. And he says, mercy is not only here on earth, but mercy, the mercy of God, reaches up to purgatory. That's why we pray for those who have passed away. Because through our prayers, they receive the mercy of God, and all their, their faults, whatever, for whatever reason they're there, they are erased, so they can come to the presence of God completely clean. Um, he also told me uh, when I when I was um, saying, I was reminding him that 
could it be father could it be that the reason you know what the police said that could be bullying what's happening in all these young children nowadays there's so many suicides so you know one right after the other one and and father says i don't think is is bullying he says i believe that it is rejection i said rejection and he says yes rejection it could be from the beginning of their life and one of these rejections is happens when the person the parents um think about abortion and they decide for life but the thought of ending life that life opened the door that was a rejection they rejected the life of that person so that rejection opens the door to the life of that person and then these different kinds of demons come and make a nest in the life of this person and as the child begins to grow these demons begin to mature and then they show their ugly face at any time in their life there's different kinds of rejection uh people could say well you know that child was never rejected from us parents could be another member of the family that rejected the life of that child could be generation curse from our ancestors those things can go from generation to generation and could be that rejection from that time coming down on the generations sometimes they skip one generation and hit the other one and they could be many members of that family in that generation and they'll just hit one it happens and he says the prayer here is to pray ask forgiveness for that you know sometimes it could be the doctors the nurses who reject that life we don't know who we don't know how but what we are sure is that that rejection open a door to these demons that f- are there and like i say it could begin from the beginning of the life of that person 